Yo, 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 hello! Um, welcome back, welcome, um, I always say, I don't know, I say welcome back and then I say, oh, unless of course you haven't, and this is your first time, yada, yada, yada. Well, there you go, I've done it again. Um, welcome to April, the April, April, the April edition of Talking Bollocks. And as you can see, why it's called Talking Bollocks, because um, we've been recording for 24 seconds and I've already managed to talk a load of bollocks already. Um, and, and again, keeping up the I don't bother editing the podcast, um, you can you, you can tell, can't you? Because uh, if, if this shit was edited, you, you wouldn't be listening to any of this because this is highly unprofessional and not very slick. Uh, but it is what it is. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Um, this is meant to sound like you are um, sat in a room with me, just listening to me jabber on. For those of you who haven't listened before, um, I'm hoping there's going to be quite a few of you because... Um, previous interviews may not have been in the uh, in the hell yeah sort of uh, I was going to say car park, but that doesn't really work. Who, who's t- whose tastes are described as car park? But basically, if you uh, the interviews we've done so far, they haven't really been in the same ballpark. There you go. I knew I, knew I was going to get there. I knew it was the ballpark. Um, so um, uh, yeah, if you are listening to for the first time, hello. If you're a regular um, bollocker, as I believe we may end up calling you people who listen regularly, although that seems quite offensive and not a particularly endearing term, so maybe we'll just stick with, I don't know, listener. Anyway, hello, welcome. Um, God, I've talked a lot of shit already. Um, uh, I'm your host, Howard H. Smith, um, former lead singer of UK thrash band Acid Rain. Really? Did they get signed? I think so, back in the day. And um, and I also uh, perform stand-up these, uh, these days. I have done for um, uh, at least 10 years, um, longer than I was in a band, actually. You can find me um, as, as Keith Platt on Twitter, um, on Facebook, and uh, rock along and, uh, and come to a gig and say hello. Um, and um, and also, while we're talking about Facebook, Twitter, and everything else, hey, 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 guess what, folks? You can now uh, tweet um, uh, Talking Bollocks. That's right, you can, uh, you can tweet us. Um, the uh, uh, the amusing um, Twitter ID is at Talking Bollocks. So let me spell that. Yeah, it's basically at Talking Bollock with a Z instead of an S. Hang on, sorry. At Talking Bollocks, but with a Z instead of an S, because funnily enough, at Talking Bollocks had already gone. There's a lot of bollocks being talked on Twitter, obviously. So that's at Talking, and that's with a capital T. Bollocks with a capital B, and that is spelt B O L L O C K Z. So that's T capital T A L K I N G capital B O double L O C K Z. There you go, and that's why I'll never be a fucking newsreader. Um, so yeah, do, feel free, please, um, please follow us because we've only got twenty followers at the moment, and uh, uh, given that it, that's just a bit fucking sad, isn't it? Twenty follows, twenty twenty followers, so. God, I hope my speech is going to improve over the course of this fucking podcast. I'm tripping over words like a fucking idiot at the moment. My, my apologies. Um, so anyway, um, let's crack on. Um, uh, first off, I've got uh, there's a, a little bit of housekeeping to do as a reaction to the March edition of the podcast. And first up, I should probably uh, confess to being a complete fucking idiot, which regular listeners will already know, or anybody who's followed my career will know. Um, I, uh, I played a band by a, I played a track by a band that I was determined to, to call X I I I constantly through the podcast. And, um, and as, uh, the, uh, the band representative who got the CD through to me said, yeah, um, it's actually pronounced 13. Uh, yeah, but um, I've got to be honest with you, I fucking hate Roman numerals. Always have, always will. Never been able to wrap my fucking head around them. Um, but uh, yeah, so if you're wondering why, uh, I, yeah, X, I, 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 they're called 13 and that was just me being an absolute cock. So uh, so anyway, check them out. Some really positive feedback about the uh, about the track I played last week. So it's um, thanks for that. It's very cool. Um what else has been going on? Uh, uh, thanks to uh, uh, the the winner of the uh, Slipknot book, John. Um, thank you very much, John, or Info, as I like to call him, as his email address was. Um, uh, and thank you for proving why I'm not going to do any more <laughs> competitions, 
Because I was saying to you guys that you're obviously too cool for school. Nobody's really bothered about, you know, reacting to competitions. Nobody, nobody's bothered about uh, winning free shit. You just want a cool podcast, which, again, is very, very cool. Um, and uh, John highlighted this, really, by the fact that he's the one winner of the competition and, um, uh, and basically replied to us to say, uh, yeah, thanks for that. It's going straight on eBay. So the signed Slipknot book, um, if you're uh, if you're interested, that's going to be uh, that's going to be on eBay very soon. So uh, I think that just about shows up. Uh, uh, just about kind of you know gets across uh, what the average um, uh, listen to the show is like, and that is pretty damn cool. So yeah, um, yeah, no no more competitions, folks. But there you go. Um, the other thing on listening back to last month's show uh, because I I have to listen back at least once just to check it before we we send it out. And and I noticed something, and I don't, as you know, I don't edit as this episode already proved. Um, I have to fucking admit, I, I, for anybody else out there who did notice, well spotted, there is a horrendous Alan Partridge as, um, impression by me at one point, where where I say I was where I sat down, or as I like to call it, chat. It was it was just you know the chatosphere. It really was complete Alan Partridge uh, territory. So um, yeah. My um, my sincere apologies about that. Um, so anyway, moving on. Um, sat down with Tommy from Prong this um, this week. Um, sorry, this month, a couple of weeks ago. Tommy Victor um, and um, have the new album. You can check out the review on allabouttherock.co.uk um, because this is a, um, a podcast that is attached to a website. Go and check it out www. Obviously, what are you a fucking moron? All about the rock. Co. Uk. Very cool people who run the site. They allow me to do this podcast, um, uh, which is wonderful. They allow my massive ego to stomp all over their website, which is very kind of them. Um, and they get some pretty cool interviews. So yeah, sat down with Tommy Victor, which was very cool. Really cool uh, chat with him. Um, that's going to be coming up in April. Um, and it was really funny actually because he did he didn't remember when we met like way back in the day and then the interview finishes and we were talking for about five minutes and he went hey dude I do remember you and I was thinking oh shit I wish we could have got this on the interview because you know it would have sounded a lot cooler than no dude sorry completely don't remember you <laughs> um, there you go anyway um, uh, yeah you can go to the, uh, the website for the review basically um, uh, I, I mean, I completely and totally loved Carved Into Stone, which was their, the, the previous album. I mean, that was just fucking immense. Uh, and it's one of my favourite albums of probably the last 10 years. If you haven't heard it, just fucking do yourself a favour. What the fuck are you doing with your life if you have not heard Carved Into Stone by Prong? It is, um, it is just such a crushing, to use a modern term, it's a crushing album. It really, really is. Um, I would seriously suggest getting Carved Into Stone, listen to Carved Into Stone, then um, uh, get Ruining Lives, which is the follow-up, because it's, it's very much what Prong do. When they come out with a really heavy album, they will then follow it with something more melodic and a bit more, a bit more diverse, which is what um, uh, Ruining Lives is like. Um, but um, I saw their I saw their show, um, which was just fucking superb. Um, the sound was awesome. It was really well attended on a Sunday night, um, which was great. I got to hang out with a longtime friend of mine, Hector, from uh, who's uh, just a, a top man um, from back in the day. So we just, we just got to just hang out and uh, and also see prong. And the sound was amazing. The song choice was amazing. Um, and it was just it was just a really good show. I, I, I don't want to go on about it too much because I just I, I will sound like I'm just you know this is a prong advert, but um, it was it was superb. It really was. So um, check out all the new shit from prong. Um, also, we had a breakthrough month last uh, uh, last month. Um, we got well, I got Howard at um, allaboutthe.rock.co.uk. If you want to email Howard at allaboutthe.rock.co.uk. I got my first junk mail. Yeah, excellent. On the fucking map now, aren't I? Eh? Um, got some, got some proper junk mail. Um, totally indecipherable, but um, hey, you know, I, I just thought it was. Uh, I just thought I'd share that with you. Come, don't really, really know why I have shared that with you to be honest. So uh, yeah, just skip this bit if you listen to it again because uh, yeah, it's shit really, isn't it? Um, so. Um, 
Uh, what else is going on? Um, uh, coming up, I, I, I'm starting to get I'm starting to get some um, pre-release um, albums as well. I've got a pre-release of Ruining Lives, which is great. I've got pre-release of Killer Be Killed, um, which is the project put together by the dude, uh, the singer dude from Dillinger Escape Plan, Max Caballera. Um, Troy Sanders from Mastodon and the ex drummer from ah oh, fucking hell. Do you know you'd think I'd make notes about this shit, wouldn't you? Um, but I decided to try and rely on my failing weed battered memory, and um, it never works. Drummer from the Mars Volta. There you go. I can never remember the name of that band because I thought they were shit. But there you go. Um, so yeah, and and it's really cool. It's uh, it's it's um yeah, it's a super group album that's not shit. Because let's face it, supergroups, they never they all were, never fail to disappoint, do they? I mean, I remember back in the day, and don't don't fucking lose your shit at me, but I remember back in the day, Mr. Big. Yeah? Oh, boy, we couldn't wait for that. We couldn't wait for that. And then we fucking heard it, and oh, dear, it's just basic bluesy cock rock. Um, but there you go. Yeah, so they say, yeah, I mean, often these side projects don't work. It's pretty damn cool. Um... It's it, you know if you're into Mastodon if you're into what Max has done over the years if you're into Dillinger Escape Plan you're probably not going to be that keen if you're into Dillinger to be honest because it's nothing like that at all. Um, but if you're into Seps Max's stuff uh, Mastodon so it's definitely worth checking out. Um, uh, I, and uh, you know there's there's some there is some hellishly cool um, riffs and hooks in there. It's definitely hookier and more commercial than um, than a lot of stuff. And my apologies because I've just realised that I'm going on and on you know about this and it's it's not actually out it's not in fact it's not out till next month it's not out until the middle of may but you can check out i think there's two songs available on youtube which you can check out so um yeah um get your ears around those um definitely worth checking out also just just got a pre-release of the new Trypticon album and um here's my review of the Trypticon album ooh fucking heavy and that's about it um I, I gotta be honest some of it is a bit artsy fartsy for me and i just can't be fucking i, I don't have the patience um i you know i'm, I'm all for let's ex, you know let's let's expand genres and do interesting stuff and everything but you know when it's just fucking boring it's just fucking boring and there's no two ways around that but it, it is heavy as fucking hell i mean there's no way that Tom Warrior is ever going to put anything out. Um, and he's Tom Warrior. Fuck this Tom Gabriel Fisher shit. That started with Cold Lake. And we all know what happened there. So, uh, yeah. Tom Warrior is um, uh, never going to release an album. That, I was going to say he's never going to release an album that is not crushingly heavy. And then I just realised I've just referenced Cold Lake, which is fucking lightweight dog shit. So, um, uh, fuck me for getting that wrong. But anyway, yeah. Trypticon, if you've liked what they've done so far, and you liked Sonic Frost, yeah, yeah you'll, you'll love it. I'm just, uh, I, I'm just a little bit. Um, it, it just gets a little bit tedious at times, and I just think he, I think um, he, he manages to get away with a lot of stuff by being arty and being, you know, really oh, just creating art and culture, and I, I, I just think that's a little bit of a cop out because to me, um, some of it is just good old fashioned, plain fucking boring. But um, that is just my opinion. Um, but that is the only opinion you're going to get on my podcast. So if you are looking for other opinions, I suggest you fuck off somewhere else. Um, so, uh, yeah, what else? Oh, um, a little bit of comedy, actually. A bit, a bit, I want to drop some stuff in about comedy. Um, uh, I've been confirmed for the Download Festival. Um, I'll give you dates and times as, uh, as and when that comes. But, um, yeah, Download Festival is coming up. So, um that's cool if you weren't going to spend the fucking 600 quid or whatever it is to go for the weekend because none of the bands were you weren't really into the lineup well guess what you got a reason to go now because i'm going to be doing a comedy set fucking rocking as keith platt i might add so um don't look for my name on the bill um and um uh yeah, did, did a gig last night and um yeah, uh, it was it, yeah, it was awesome. It was really cool, and um, I managed to get the uh, get the telephone digits of a, a certain young lady. And what, what? Why do you give your phone number out and then just fucking not reply? I I really really don't get that. I don't think for a minute that there's any stroke many uh, girls listening to this. If there is, please please tweet me, please email me, and please explain the female brain to me. Can you? 
Because this, like, yeah, yeah, I'll give you my number. Yeah, no problem. And then just fucking silence, radio silence. Like, what? Where does that? You know, what, what am I supposed to do with that? It's even worse. Even worse. I, I do realise I'm sharing more of my personal life than you're probably interested. In, but even worse, I found a number in in my in my phone book, and she's also in my WhatsApp. And her profile picture in WhatsApp is. I'm not going to describe it in detail, but let's just say, fucking hell, I really hope that I hear back from her. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, just in case you, uh, you've you been listening for the last 15 minutes and thinking, I thought this was about music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I, try, I, try, I try and cover a multitude of sins here. Um uh, and moving on, um, uh, I, um, uh, yeah, I announced um, on Facebook via the Acid Rain Facebook page, which um, feel free to go and join. It's um, facebook.com forward slash Acid Rain Thrash. Um, on April the 1st, I announced my uh, my death on, uh, on Facebook. Now, before you think, well, that was a fucking stupid thing to do and not very funny and not really a, an April Fool, um... Uh, yeah, I'd agree with that, but to be fair, I did. There was one sentence that said, like, you know, we we we're sad to announce the passing of our uh, of our vocalist and frontman Howard H. Smith. It turns out he'd been suffering a, a terminal form of sarcasm brought on by telling too many jokes over the years. It looks like at last the joke was finally on him. Happy April the first. I mean, that's a that's a fucking April Fool, is it not? But I got some fucking grief junkies jumping on the fucking bandwagon. And, oh, that's not funny. Oh, how dare you? How can you? Uh? Yeah, basically, I, the, the kind of people, and you, we all know people like this, who, who basically their experience of anything, as far as they're concerned, um, defines the world. That's how, that's how everybody thinks. That's, that's how everybody sees something. They think that their opinion is the only opinion out there, and their opinion basically defines everything um and I, I and it was quite clear that they that, you know that they had um the people who do it had, had you know fairly recently within the last three or four years lost somebody very close to them and and i understand that and you know I, in the interview as you're gonna hear i lost my dad about seven years ago and jesus you know yeah i lost my dad but i didn't lose my sense of humor and i didn't force everybody else to lose their sense of humor either you know if, if you're still suffering like that and uh, then you need to see a grief counsellor. There's shit that you're not dealing with, and you need to go and sort that shit out. Okay, so I do realise I've got on a massive tangent here, so uh, my apologies about that. But I did want to mention it because it was it was a it was a fucking April Fool. That's all it was, right? So let's just leave it at that. Um, so I, I guess that that brings it. Up. By the way, I'm sorry if you just heard a, like a strange noise about that. Was me tapping my phone awake um, on the uh, on the bench that the mic's on. So there you go. More unprofessional behaviour from uh, from yours truly. You have come to expect that by now, have you not? So um, I guess this this brings us on to finally the. Um, oh, sorry, no, it doesn't. And one more bit of comedy stuff that I wanted to say. I just wanted to say, please go and visit comedysnapshot.com. That is comedysnapshot.com. Um, there's a guy I've gigged with over the years on the circuit called Steve Best who's created a book. It's got 440 comedians in it. Actually, hang on. Um, I've got a copy here, so here we go. That's what it sounds like, folks. 440 comedians in there. Everyone you've ever heard of, including me. Um, and, uh, yeah, just it, it's just brilliant. And basically what it is, it's backstage photographs of comedians. They supply a joke. And some few facts about themselves. Unsurprisingly, I surprise, jo I supply a joke, and you know, just dispense, just dispense all the acid rain shit. But um, yeah, it's it's a really cool book. You'd be really, I'm, I'm ve if you've got any friends who are into comedy, um, that is an awesome present. It really is. I mean, and it's a stocky thing. It's just, it's just really, really cool. So, um, so yeah, yeah, check that out. It is, um, it, it's well worth it. Um, uh, just a trail. I am gonna. Be, there is gonna be a song at the end of the podcast, and it is an exclusive um, of an album that's not coming out till May. And now, if any of you unsigned bands are thinking, "Oh, for fuck's sake, when's he?" Go I am getting to you guys. I promise. I promise. I will. I promise. I will. Um, but th these guys, uh, I know, and it's only fair 
um, to give them some uh, some airplay uh, prior to their album coming out. So anyway, if you tuned in to listen specifically to the um, Chad Gray interview, you'll be pleased to know that that is going to be coming up soon after these messages from our sponsors. Yeah, right. Like this fucking adverts on this. Like anybody, like any company would want to be associated with this. Uh, no, that's not happening. Um, the interview is coming up. Um, that noise was me banging my chest. What the fuck is wrong with me today? I'm even less professional than usual. Um, uh, the interview that's coming up with with Chad Gray um, is, um, it, it, in my opinion, it's the, it's the best one I've done. If if uh, Mudvayne and Hell Yeah and it, it is not your kind of thing or not in your wheelhouse. That doesn't matter. Uh, this is an interview with somebody who's been in the business over a decade and just put out album after album and just listen to the interview. The guy is absolutely... Well, I, all I can say is when he looks you in the eye, you fucking believe every word he says. Um, you know, if I had to use a word to describe, to, to kind of describe me, it would be integrity. Um, it's a really cool interview, even though I say so myself. It, it, it's, it is genuinely what a, a podcast should be all about. It's just two guys talking. Um, and we start right back at the early days before he was even in the band, when he was working in a, when he, he was, had a full-time job and, um, uh, and was rehearsing with Mudvayne before they were signed. And we go from there all the way through his career. We talk about... Um, uh, he, he, we do talk about Mudvayne. He's very open about that, so that's cool for anybody... Uh, and by the way, if you haven't got LD50 by Mudvayne, you are a cunt, right? If you like heavy music and you have not got LD50 by Mudvayne, pause the podcast, get the fuck onto the internet, go to Amazon, order the CD, because, yeah, I'm all about the CDs if you ain't heard this before. We're all about buying music here, because that's what we do. When we see stuff and we like, we hear stuff we like, we fucking pay for it. I know that's going to sound pretty old school to some people, but that's the way the world turns in the world of talking bollocks, right? Or if you must, just listen to it on YouTube, whatever. But LD50, that is a fucking awesome album. And for any of you old school metalers who like thrash and you're going, oh, I don't know, metalcore and new metal, oh, I don't, just listen to that album. It is, it is incredible. Some of the, some of the, the technical shit going on is just awesome. Anyway, slight departure there. Um, I do mention the new Hell Yeah album. I am going to do a full review of it um, at some point in the future. It It's the album that I wish they'd made right from the off. Um, it's the album that is most like a mixture of Mudvayne and with, with Vinnie Paul on the drums. I'm not for a minute saying it's like Mudvayne, but it's a, a lot heavier than previous Hell Yeah, and there, there is... There's bits in there that could have been off Pantera albums or that could have been off Mudvayne albums that are, they're that intense. Um, but this is a very, very cool chat with a very cool guy. It was recorded in a foyer in a hotel. At times it's quite comical because you will hear some real Muzak in the background. Uh, you, do hear, you do hear clattering. It's the foyer of a hotel, so people are moving around and going, uh, going about their way. Um, but it's just, it, you know, it, it is what it is. It's two guys hanging out we've never met before. You've got things in common. Um, and it, and it's, it, it's just, yeah, it is what it is. So uh, sit back and enjoy, I think it's over an hour, um, this. And uh, if, if you're thinking, really, wow, if that's a bit out, if you're feeling a bit outfaced, don't be. Stick with it. Listen to the whole thing. Um, because it really does go on all sorts of twists and turns, and we, we talk about a lot of stuff, and not necessarily music all the time as well. So um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I, I really enjoyed doing it. Um, what can I say? He's a top dude. And um, here it is. This is um, me talking to um, Chad Gray of formerly of Mudvayne and currently of Hell Yeah. Right, well, um, first off, here I am. Um, I am uh, sat in a, um, a rather uh, a rather swanky hotel. Yeah. Well, you know, too swanky. Really? <laughs> yeah. You, you'd like something a little bit more, uh, a little bit more down and dirty. Oh, uh, you know, it's, it's you know, hamburgers, fucking twenty bucks. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is kind of. Uh, it it Room is. Service is like forget about it. No way. We're not doing it. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's um, I'm I'm here with um, uh, Chad Gray, um, formerly um, uh, Mudvayne and currently Hell Yeah vocalist. Hello, Chad. Nice to meet you. Hello, good to meet you. Too. Oh yeah, I'm Howard, by the way. We haven't hi, we haven't Howard. done the official yeah, intros. Yeah. Oh yeah, hi. Nice to, you. Nice, right. to um, I, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. 
the, the idea is here, like, I, I want to keep this as, as, as interesting as possible for you, so, you know, we'll just have a chat about everything. That's um, fine. And, and, and one thing that, uh, just to go back to the deep, distant past, but one thing that I was wanted to talk to you about personally was um, the, the fact that you, you left a, a pretty secure job to, to, to go into the music business in a whole world of insecurity yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and all of that. I mean, that's... I, that's pretty incredible. When I read that, I was like, "You, how how did that? How did you find the nerve to do that?" You know what, man? It's like you've got to be happy, seriously. And whenever I was at work, all I could think about was music. That was it, you know. And I hated it, you know. I, I just, you know, it's a typical, you know, it was a skilled trade, but you know, but it was, it was just the redundancy. You know what I mean? Just like constant, just like over and over and over. But, you know, assembly, assembly work. You know what I mean? Just same thing, twelve hours a day, every day, or whatever. And on my days off, I would go to Peoria to uh, to practice with Mudbane. You know what I mean? And it just, yeah. you know, and I think my biggest thing is love of my life was my grandmother. You know what I mean? And she loved that I, you know, made her life easier knowing that I had that security and stuff and I think that was the biggest thing you know and <clears throat> finally I pretty much made my own internal decision to make that change you know take that big step off the ledge and just you know put it all out there but you know when you put it all out there when you uh, that's when you reap the biggest rewards you know what I mean like a high risk uh, stock or yeah, something yeah. is going to pay the biggest dividends high, high risk high reward yeah yeah high risk high reward yeah. you know so um, I was ready to make that uh commitment to to the band and uh you know i went over because i worked at like i worked like seven to seven and then we swung every two weeks and they'll work seven at night seven in the morning so uh i was on days and i went over to my grandma like her religion was get up at 4 30 in the morning you know make an oatmeal uh porridge whatever and uh <laughs> and uh you know cup of coffee pot of coffee probably and then read the newspaper cover to cover you know like you know so I got up just a little extra early and went over there and I sat with her and she's like, oh, can I get you something? You something? Know, you know, anything to eat or drink? And I'm like, no, I need to talk to you. And, you know, and she's like, you know, she's like, what's going on? And I'm like, I, you know, I know you love this job and I know you like the security to be doing it. And I was like, you know, I really just, I need your blessing. You know, I'm like, I, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, I'm, I'm sp- I spend all my time when I'm not working, driving back and forth to Peoria, which is 90 miles each way. And, uh, you know, I'm just like, I'm not happy. And she just kind of looks down and she was just like, you know, is this really what you want to do? And I'm like, yeah, this means a lot to me. And, I, you know, I really, like I said, I need your blessing. And she always believed me, no matter what I did. She always believed me. And that's really, that's why I loved her so much. And, uh, didn't have a lot of support like that from the rest of my family and stuff. So, uh, my grandma never never cussed, and she just looked at me really just straight on, and she's like, "You do what you want to do, and I and I support you 100, percent but don't fuck it up." Straight up said, "Don't fuck it up. Don't fuck this up." <laughs> Is that You're the first do, time you'd heard a curse? Well, I mean, I'd heard her cuss before. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, it was pretty. For her to say that, I knew that she really meant it. She's like, you know, basically, don't half-ass it. Yeah. You know, if you're gonna go, go all the way. She's, and that and that was a pretty big exhale. And I was like, oh, cool. You know, I mean, because it was important to me. I didn't want any friction between us because she was everything I'd ever had. You know, and uh, really was a big support through my life and on many levels. And uh, you know, that happened. And I just put my notice in, and you know, I packed my car up, and you know. Uh, took off for Peoria and lived in a, you know, I had a little house and, you know, that I lived in in a pretty, you know, pretty comfortable life, you know, and moved into a no bedroom apartment with my, the original bass player. (laughs) So it was really uncomfortable, but you know what? It was, it was awesome. We had a good, we had a, uh, it was cool to live like that. You know what I mean? You really need to live like that to appreciate all the good things, you know, that reward that we're talking about, you know what I mean? That made all the little, the little things and, uh, clearing the hurdles that much better you know it was like wow you know because I did live hard you know I lived hard most of my life but then to have it 
Well, then easy, you easy it, street, and then yeah. you go back to living hard and shit. But it was like we went back to living hard for a reason. Wait, but yeah. you you chose it as well. It's not like it was forced uh, uh, upon exactly. you. Exactly. Like, yeah, I didn't so, choose. Yeah. I didn't choose the original. But uh, yeah, that one's definitely what I chose, and it was it was awesome, man. And it's made everything uh, really worth it because I know I worked hard for it. You know, yeah. I work hard for everything. I mean, everything we do. It's it's like you know, yeah. uh, from what we talked about, you know, it's a hard it's a hard fucking job. It really is a hard job, and I'm not saying don't do it. And I'm certainly not trying to talk anybody out of it. I, I think that it's awesome. It's it has its ups, but it has it's 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 a difficult job, man. Yeah. You know, but I think yeah. it's. And it's not for everybody, but you know, if you have a passion for for art and music, you know, no matter what it is, go for it. You know? Well, I think it's 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 funny because it's a, it's a kind of recurring theme talking to bands where it, 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 I think you know people who haven't been in bands and people who just turn up to the show and just see the show, mm-hmm. you know, they, they don't get what a what a job it is because mm-hmm. when you're on the road, you're effectively at work twenty four seven. Twenty four seven. You know, and and again, that's a concept that most people are never going to be able to wrap their brains around mm-hmm. um, and, and it does seem like you know wow yeah so you just travel around on a bus and you go yeah, from yeah. town to town it's yeah, like yeah. call that work that's a fucking holiday yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like travelling is tiring yeah it's very you know? tiring it seems yeah. glamorous but it's you know, and that's what I was said. Like from the time I pack my my suitcase and I like my and it crosses the the plane of my door, you know, and I'm walking out. I'm at work, yeah. straight up. I'm at work, and so it's, it's nonstop. And people, all the you know, uh, I said this the other day on some other uh, radio thing. It's like you know, people see the big shiny bus pull up. And like, oh, what's it like being on the road? I'm like, invite ten of your closest friends into your bedroom for three months. You know what <laughs> I mean? It really is. You know, yeah. it's swinging dicks everywhere, and it stinks, and you sleep in one little. You know, area of the bus. You know what I mean? There's the front yeah. lounge, and then the middle. Well, in America, it is. It's different over here, but you know, the front lounge, and there's the middle. Uh, the bunk, the bunks are in the middle, and everybody sleeps in those areas. And then there's a the little back lounge or whatever, and that's that's your life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I had a bus to myself, it'd be fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but with ten other people, it kind of sucks. You know. Well, but, uh, yeah. I mean, it's like uh, I heard a great quote from uh, Kim Thal, the, um, uh, the guy from uh, Soundgarden. Soundgarden yeah. Yeah. And it was a great quote. He said, um, "Being in a band is a lot like being in a marriage." Yeah, we've all heard that one before. He said, "Like, but you're not fucking each other. You're fucking with each other." I, I, I think that's great. And I mean, I've said that actually before too. It's like, dude, a band, a band is really a forced family. You know, you get together and you start thinking like, you know, you're you're just all fucking amped up and jazz because you're writing this music and creating this shit together and you're looking around at each other and you're smiling and you're kicking ass and you're getting on stage and blowing it up and it's fun as shit. But the, you know, the more you get through it, the more you go or whatever in that kind of that excitement uh, of the initial like uh, creation process recording process and stuff becomes so you're doing it every single day and you're doing pretty much the same songs and the same thing every day so there's a kind of a level of factory work you yeah, know, yeah, even in bands yeah, and yeah, stuff but yeah, I agree you're and on the and, assembly line and, and, and you know you are bros and you do care about each other and there and it is tight mix and stuff like that but it really was a forced family it was put yeah. together this way and it's just people's natural I think reaction is just start kind of pulling away from each other you know what I mean and you have to keep finding reasons to keep diving back in yeah. you know so I, de- I definitely understand what he's saying and it, and it is like a marriage except a marriage is with one person yeah oh yeah one yeah. person and you're having sex with them there's a physical element where everybody just shuts the fuck up and gets down you know what I'm saying yeah. like you know I'm, if I'm banging my you know your wife or whatever it's like you know what I mean it's like if I'm banging my wife I'm banging my wife we're not talking we're not bickering we're not arguing we're fucking and that's awesome you know what I mean but how long does that last you know what I mean so yeah, yeah. you know it's, uh, eventually climax and it's fucking over and then here comes the arguments again. Yeah. so uh, the, the thing is that that's the thing with Vance it's not one person Person, it's you know three to four others. Yeah, and it's not it's groups. And there's no the yeah sex. yeah. And there is no there is no fucking, <laughs> which is fine with me. And uh, you know what I mean. And there's no fucking. And so there's that. There's not that. Just shut the fuck up and intimate closeness. You know what I mean. Yeah. I guess the closest you could get to that would be to perform the music. You know yeah. what I mean together and stuff that's because it, yeah, it is something true. that you created. So it is kind of your sex. With, with, it is kind of the sex of the band. Is like yeah. you know, the intimacy. I yeah. guess so let's call it intimacy, not sex, because that's just fucking weird. But yeah, uh, yeah the <laughs> intimate moments that you have with the band or whatever is when you're on stage and you're playing what you created together. Yeah. And that's yeah. awesome. But you only get to do that between 
you know, 40 and an hour and a half a day, depending on what tour you're on or what how long your slot is or how many songs you get to play, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and, and then it's over, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, and that, that's part, back to the grind of, of the road or whatever. It's like, the, you know, my whole kind of philosophy with, with touring is just like, you know, there's a, there's a difference between living and there's a, and being alive. Yeah. When you're playing music, you're alive, you're electric, you're on fire, and it's killer. It's the other 23 hours a day, you're just living and breathing and sucking fucking air and shoveling pizza in your face or whatever bullshit, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, yeah. that really sucks, that hurry up and wait, sit around, doing nothing, just waiting for that moment again to be alive. And then next thing you know, here comes a fucking day off or whatever, and then you're just sitting around your hotel room, you know, fucking pulling off and fucking ordering overpriced room service, and you know, maybe you get out, you know, maybe yeah. you get out or something. But. Well, that, that kind of leads me onto a, a question about um, about the fact that obviously you've recorded a new album and you're now there's there's been two members leave since then. Mm-hmm. There. There seems to be a lot of a lot of unanswered questions there. Yeah, um, I don't like to talk about it. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, it's, it must it's be, just, it must be painful because you've played, you've played with Greg for like years. forever. Yeah. yeah. Now we've that's known, we've known going back other. to that whole relationship thing. That's yeah, got to yeah. be. There's got to be some. It is. It's been very emotional for me. But you know, literally, man, every everything happens for a reason, and sometimes there's no excuses and there's no there's no reason why things happen. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just you know. And I'm not saying this is necessarily his situation or whatever, but I just kind of put it out there or whatever. Sometimes, I mean, I've, I've worked with people before that worked for me or whatever, you know. Yeah. I've worked for people before that work or worked with people before that worked for me, say, crew guy or whatever. And basically just kind of, it takes a lot to just quit, you know what I mean, to just yeah. quit something. Sometimes you just kind of go but you're not you're not really happy so everything just kind of starts melting down on yourself and then next thing you know it's like well you want it you just go you know what I mean like just you know what I mean and I, I'm not I don't know exactly uh, everything about that and I don't want to put too much out there because I don't want people to make stories and read too far into it and stuff like that yeah uh, you know the, basically we just that's kind of just how we're looking at it it's just everything happens uh, for a reason and and uh, as cliche as that sounds, it's cliche because it's been said a million times. You know, and there's, a million, it's true. there's a million examples of what of the reason why things happen. You know, yeah. so it just it is what it is. And I, I still love him. I always love him. He's a he's a brother to me, and and uh, and I support him 100. percent And I I, I I will only ever wish him the best. Yeah. He's a great great human being. He's a great person, and I, I wish all the best for him. Oh, that's cool because it, it's it. You know, we live in an age where everybody wants that sound mm-hmm. right. Everybody wants that. Like, can you just put that in one sentence as mm-hmm. to you know what happened? Mm-hmm. And as you've you know eloquently described there, mm-hmm. it's it's not that simple. And no. also, you're talking about people's lives. Mm-hmm. You know, and and not everything deserves to be in the in the public domain right. just because you play music for a living. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and they are it's, they're intimate relationships. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. I've, We've created, we've shared a lot of great stuff together, man. We've done a lot of great shit together, you know. And those are the things that I know that our that our that our brotherhood's built on. Our bond is solid, you know what I mean? Because we've done so much cool shit, you know. Whether you know, judge it if you want. If you're on the outside and you don't give a fuck about this band or that band or whatever, I'm just yeah. talking about yeah. us as our brotherhood bond. We feel like we've done great shit. We know we've done great shit, whether people like it or not. We loved the process. Yeah. And the process is what it's all about. Creating together and uh, you know like I said that, that's and that's pretty much the, just the perfect way to end it is just I wish him all the best and I love him to death and I always will well that, I mean the, the talking of creative processes um, where, where the fuck does that new album come from yeah. I mean that is you know yeah. um, <laughs> you've, it just opens up and it opens up and you go oh we're in this room now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay yeah. right uh, I mean you know, there's some there's some real old school stuff in there. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've made a lot of changes. You didn't, you know, you've, you've come out of your comfort zone from you know, recording and producing. You've mm-hmm. gone somewhere else. You've got somebody else into, you know, mm-hmm. to work with as well. And that, um, was, that was a great situation. Kevin was so awesome, man. I mean, to you know, obviously you question it when you first get together. But I've worked with David Bottrell. I've worked with Dave Fortman. 
you know what I mean? I've worked with Garth Richardson. I mean, I've worked with different people in my band and stuff. So I know the process of, of, of working with a producer. But you're always getting a, a different personality. And everybody's always an artist. So, you know, producers are artists, you know, by their own right. And so a lot of times it's like you don't know how it's going to work. Are you going to clash? Are you going to butt heads? Uh, there's always a, a growing pain in the beginning and stuff like that. And then eventually you figure each other out. And it works out. It's just how long is it going to take? You know, is it going to take two weeks? Is it going to take the whole goddamn process before everything's like all, you know, yeah. fucking silver lining and everything's like all great and fucking beautiful, you know, at the very end or something. But Kevin is just so laid back. I mean, he's he's Canadian, dude, and I, I don't know what it is. And I'm not trying to stereotype Canadians. I think Canadian <laughs> people are awesome. I love Canadian people. Uh, yeah. And I love people from all over the world. But, uh, you know, can, Canadians generally are real, just real laid back, real chill people, awesome, you know, great personalities, great sense of humors, and he's all of those things. I mean, he's, he's just, you could have just told me he's from where he's from, and I would have been like, I think he's going to be awesome. You know what I mean? Everybody I ever met from there is really cool. You know, and uh, so it, it was cool, and he's really talented. He's a very talented uh, uh, artist. Um, you know, he's a killer drummer, he's, uh, he's a great guitar player, he plays keys, I mean, he just understands, he understands music. Yeah. And to have somebody like that as a sounding board, you know what I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't pushy, he wasn't like barking at this is what I've got to have, I mean, he worked side by side, he, worked, he was like Mutt Lang's right hand man. I mean, dude, that is like fucking top, upper echelon of like, who you can work with because I'm knowing the way that that dude works the stories that I've heard before I met Kevin or whatever is just absolute fucking precision and does not care and just I'm going to do what's best for the song I don't give a fuck if we go we have to sing this thing syllable by syllable we're going to put it together and it's going to be fucking amazing and what a track record that guy's got <laughs> yeah, yeah. but I mean, Kevin told me stories he's like dude you know they work you know 16 hours a day every day you know and then come back in the next day and start all over again on the same track they worked on for 16 hours the day before. It's unbelievable. Like, yeah. do you realize the level of patience you have to have to work with that? But that's the kind of person he is. He's very, very patient. And he lets the song find itself. You know what I mean? Sometimes you're like, it's like you're trying to guide this thing into something. You know what I mean? It's, there's musical energy out there and it's going to touch Tom a certain way and then it's going to start a riff and then you know then he's going to come in with a beat or whatever and I just kind of let the song just kind of like like start you know pushing buttons in my head to decide kind of where it's going to go obviously I'm not going to write some like sung out ballady thing over something that's going you know what I mean and obviously I'm not going to go just something that's like you know what I mean it's like songs kind of dictate what you want them to do the energy of music or whatever so uh, but there's still a process. I mean, you know, it's like, okay, this is this is how I'm going to approach it. This is how I feel like the song wants to be written, and this is what I'm going to do. But I still have to flush these ideas out. You know, what I mean, I have to, you know, and, and, and am I right all the time? No. If I was right all the time, I'd be a fucking billionaire. Because I would have, I would, and a producer as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I'd be a fucking billionaire if if everybody was right all the time. You'd be a billionaire because yeah. you would have made every stock market fucking you know <laughs> bought in right at the bottom and fucking wrote it all the way to the top and got out at the perfect time if everybody knew all the answers. So, so I think that that's the thing. It's like putting away your ego. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, you yeah, check right. your fucking yeah. ego at the door whether you're a drummer, or a fucking guitar player, a singer, or a producer, or a fucking engineer, or whatever. You just check your ego and get together in a room and like. Like I said, Kevin's that sounding board. He was that sounding board. You know, we'd start rolling off something and he would come back. You know, he's like, that's, you know, sometimes it'd be like, that's it. Um, sometimes it'd be like, ah, you know, you can like maybe try this. You know what I mean? Maybe that worked and maybe it didn't. And, you know, so now I'll become, sudden I become a sounding board for his idea. And, you know, like, but I never went, nah, it's fucking bullshit. That sucks. You know what yeah. I mean? And he never went, nah, it's fucking bullshit. That sucks. There's a process. And that process is what's what's really exciting about creating music. Well, it's, and a, it's a two-way it street, isn't it? Absolutely, one hundred percent. It's probably even a more-way street because <laughs> you've got a drummer and you know guitar players and and, and, and everybody. And you know everybody uh, because of the ego being checked at the door. Everybody's opinions respected. You know, and yeah. Vinny would come in and stuff and, and listen. And I re absolutely respect him a ton as a producer. You know. Uh, you know, for what he did with all the Pantera records and Damage Plan and even the first, you know, Hell Yeah records and stuff like that. I respect his opinion. 
and you know, um, I'd almost be done with the song, or maybe I'd get done with the song and just you know hit him up because he lived only he only lived two miles from the studio. It was literally right up the street from his house, nice. and that's where we stay was at his house. And I just oh, be like, hey nice. dude, yeah, it was fucking awesome. Yeah, and he'd be like, hey dude, you know, I need you to come over to the studio like now, you know, because I'm done. I need to know. I'm done with this, and I need to figure out. Uh, want you to put an ear on it? Do I need to? switch gears you know what I mean just like I just want your opinion like come over and he could he'd, he'd roll over you know five minutes or so and, and, and whatever and come in and listen to it and I mean there were times when I was really kind of like on the fence about stuff and he'd come in and listen to it and be like it's fucking awesome I'll we'll change the thing you know it's perfect I'm like really you know and then I, and then I would go back <laughs> yeah. in and fuck with it more you know because yeah. it wasn't it wasn't sitting right with me you know and then sometimes I it would be sitting right with me and he'd be like oh, I want you to try that and I'm like you know what? I'll listen. Yeah, that's all you can do. You yeah. know what I mean? If I were to shut him down, I might that might be the greatest fucking idea on the whole record. Well, the thing is as well, if you if you've already got something in the can that, mm-hmm. that, that you're comfortable with, then it can't hurt to try something else anyway. To listen, can it? because yeah, exactly. It, it, just just you like, might discover something you didn't know you had. Mm-hmm. It comes in exactly. It could be the greatest idea on the record, but I just went ah, fuck it. You know, because I carried my ego in when he didn't. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, and that's the whole point. You check your fucking ego at the door, and you always. I'm not saying you can't be passionate about what you're doing. I mean, I'm not gonna fucking lay there and be a fucking floor mat and somebody's just walking and wipe their fucking feet all over me. I'm gonna have an opinion, absolutely. But they just, we never work that way. Yeah. I mean, the bands never work that way. There's always been a tremendous amount of respect for what everybody does, and we don't, we just don't treat each other like that. It's fucking, it's, it's a really cool. Situation. So, do you go in? Do you go in with the sort of skeleton ideas for songs, or would you go in with some of some are pretty much finished that you're like totally happy with, or do you go in there with a kind of like, well, this is the, the menu, and we'll have a chat with the, you know, we'll, we'll work with this guy and see what happens, or you know, how did, did, did he get involved in pre-production at all or anything like that? Kevin? Yeah. No. Right. Vinny and Tom like basically pretty much wrote the entire record, like in in Dallas. Uh, in about three weeks or whatever I think they wrote like 11 or 12 songs put them together like, like the nuts and bolts of them right you know I mean okay there weren't like massive changes or anything like that but like um, um, you know I, I really went in with nothing it's crazy I mean I always 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 take notes uh, just I go like a goddamn Olympic goalie. Like nothing gets by me. If I hear something that somebody says or hear something on TV or whatever, you're a, you're a collector yeah, of phrases. I'm a, I'm a collector of phrases, yeah, of yeah. words, of just like words that inspire me. I read, you know what I mean? If I if I just see a word I like, I'll just if I don't know it, I'll look it up and that's oh, a cool word, you know? And I might write the word down or whatever. I, I, I heard I heard frenemies for the first time the other day. I was like, I'm having that. Frenemies? <laughs> frenemies, yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, that's really cool. I like that. Well, dude, one of, the, one of my, like, favorite words on this record is piratical. And I like it. I mean, I've probably, I probably heard it in my life or whatever. I don't want to, for people to think I'm stupid. <laughs> <'Cause> I, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe people are like, oh, my God, I've heard that word. Like, hey, well, what? I'm one of those people because yeah, I'm thinking yeah. piratical? Yeah, really? piratical. It's to attack like a pirate. Really? Like fucking pie radical. I mean, to be like radical and yeah. fucking, you know, just completely over the top. And I'm just like, uh, I gotta use that word, you know. Yeah, and it made yeah, it yeah. across the band. Robot, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So I wrote it down. I'm like, pie radical. What a fucking cool word to attack like a pirate. Like I mean, and just to just to say the definition to attack like a pirate. It sounds like some pretty intense shit. You know well, what it's I mean? kind of come full circle because it's yeah. like you know, once upon a time that would have been like you know, our mid eighties yeah, you know, yeah, attacking yeah. the ship. Yeah. So it just sort of it disappears out of language as that dies away, and now we've got like you know, Somali pirates taking people hostage exactly. and shit like to that. You know, mainstream f- movies about yeah. it. The word comes back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. To be a fucking pirate. <laughs> I mean, a fucking pirate. It's wow. not like some yodi hody fucking, I'm going to take some cargo from here to there yeah. to be a pirate. You're like, all right, boys, we're going to go fuck some people up and we're going to take all their shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. and we're going to... And we're going to do it at sea. Yeah, <laughs> and we're going to fucking... Yeah, yeah, exactly. At sea, at the, at the elements of the, of the world and all that shit. But, you know, I just I just remember that. It was just an example of, like, how I kind of just, like, process stuff and, you know, just write shit, just write things down that I see, read, hear, fucking... Or whatever, and, yeah. Uh, you know, and there's ob- obviously stuff that happens to you. There's mm-hmm. a certain instances oh, that you. So it's a, it's a cathartic process. In, oh, absolutely. In, in, in some cases, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, and uh, I, I mean, 
coming to the track DMF on the uh, on the on the, on the yeah, new album. Man. Uh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's um, that, that that's like full on yeah. in your face. Yeah. Just have just, at it. Yeah. It was, you know, me and a friend of mine were talking one time, and it was just like we were just like bullshit, and it's like it was one of my best friends, and we were just, you know, just like it's like you know you you down motherfucker or whatever or. I can't remember exactly because we were drinking. I can't remember if I said to him or he said it to me or whatever. I'm just like, that's fucking awesome. DMF, you know what I mean? Because it's like our friendship and stuff and the friendships that I have that are like my brothers or whatever. It's like, it's a new, it's a fucking whole nother level of uh, of honesty and integrity and the way that you carry yourself and like you make being honest and, and having like full integrity like the priority of your life. And when you do that, everything else just kind of follows into place. You know what I mean? And you surround yourself with those type of people. And if you do, you're less apt to get hurt. You know what I yes. mean? And yeah. and I'm never gonna hurt you because you are you are my DMF. You are yeah, my you, friend. You've got that inner yeah, circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's a circle trust. that I want to grow. You yeah. know what I mean? I want to grow and I want to share that kind of vibe with 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 our family because I don't I don't look at at, at people that come to our shows or listen to our records as fans. I think it's whatever. I did. And they're a level of like when you say the fan, it almost like puts them below I, you or something. I, I'm with you on that. Yeah, and I don't absolutely. Believe that. Yeah, I don't yeah. fucking believe that. I don't think people are below me. You know what I mean? Like maybe physically because I'm up on a stage, but I mean, yeah. standing you know eye to eye with somebody, it's like you know I respect people that do all sorts of different jobs because I've done them. You know what I mean? I've done yeah. those fucking jobs, and they, you know, but what would a rock star or a fucking you know, a, a movie star or whoever be without a guy that can't fucking assemble a Ferrari or who, who would they be without a guy that can't build this badass, beautiful home? Yeah. You're just a dude walking around because you ain't got a car yeah. looking for a fucking hole in the wall to take cover in, you know, or a hole, hole in the ground to take cover in because there's nobody to build you a structure that's this beautiful home. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, you can have all the fucking money in the world, but if you don't have people that are skilled at doing what they do, then you're... Then with the, you know what? It's an equal playing field. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, it's just kind of the way I look at it. You know, the look at life. It's like I respect people for on many, many levels. You know, because it takes a lot of people to make the world go round. Yeah, and uh, you know, when you're, um, uh, as you say, you, you, when you're on stage, you're like, I mean, from from my own experience and you know, in my old band, it was very much a case of just wanting to reflect. It's like. You know, the reason we put a band together was because we love music. That's mm -hmm. because we went to see bands, mm -hmm. and and you just want to communicate that look, we're just fans of music. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I, I, I've been stood where you are plenty mm -hmm. of times, mm -hmm. and you just happen to be on the floor tonight. I'll be on the floor yeah, watching yeah. somebody else, oh, yeah. feeling like you. You know, we're all just fans of music ultimately. At Absolutely. The end of the day. Absolutely. In in the creation of the music that that we play or whatever is, I mean, ultimately, uh, and this is for any band. You know, out there, or whatever, and, and any artist on any level with any medium, whether it's painting or, or, or anything, you know what I mean, on any artistic level, you do it kind of for yourself first. It's because it's an extension of who I am, you know. Yeah. So I wrote the song, the lyrics or the melodies or like put the song together. We did it for ourselves first, you know what I mean? And then all you do is you share it with people. You want people, you want to be able to share it with people. You know what well, I mean? Well, that, and, and, see, and see if it touches them the same way it touched you. Well, that's and, and, and that's that's art. And mm -hmm. when and when art when that when that process gets corrupted by hey, let's write a radio single or whatever, mm -hmm. that's when it becomes product. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's not a route you go down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like you say, you keep it pure, you keep it. It's, keep it's it fucking you, real. Yeah, it's what you want to. It's hey, it's corny, but keep it's it, true, isn't it? Keep it fucking keep DMF, it real. man. <laughs> keep it DMF. You know what I mean? I mean, just the, be down. The, the, the sound, the sound of this album is, and, and not just from a production point of view, but the sound of this album is, um, it sounds like, I don't know, it sounds like something you've been working towards, you know, because for, for me it sounds mm -hmm. sound different to the previous albums. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's a, a lot less sort of partying and and, and yeah, happy yeah, tunes, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, yeah. It's like all you guys are like, some, do you know what I mean? This is some yeah, fucking some angst. metal. Yeah, yeah. That there's we're, some fucking we're, angst, man, for sure. I mean, there's some anger angst all that shit and I think that that's kind of like the whole vibe of the band or whatever when we started we didn't even know each other so we didn't know what the fuck we were gonna do we just were the fucking five guys that got in the room 
and we just started playing it, and that's the first record. It, can, you, it absolutely sounds like that. It sounds like fucking five guys that didn't really know each other. Got in a room, we jammed out, and it was fun. So, so w- did somebody put you in a room together? Did you all just kind of hook up? No, Tom, Tom and I talked. And... No, Tom and I uh, met each other in 2000 when I was in my vein on Tattoo the Earth, and he was in Nothing Phase. And we got on really well and got drunk, you know, and, and you know, party and sort of like, you know, that whole, ah, I love you, man. We got to do a band together someday. You know, it took yeah. seven years for that to come to fruition. But the next thing you know, we're standing there and, you know, the, the, uh, somehow through the, the original bass player, um, he had known Vinny and Dime really well or whatever. And uh, obviously this is after uh, Dime's passing and stuff and, you know, a few years and he just kept hitting him up. Just kept hitting him up, hitting him up, hitting him up. And finally he said, yeah. Finally he and, gave in. And it was like, I remember talking to him on the phone. It was 14 minutes and 38 seconds. I talked to him on the phone. And it was a month away before I went to, to Texas. And I never talked to him again. I talked to the guy one time with Vinny, who was a fucking hero. I mean, yeah. I don't know anybody that wasn't a Pantera fan. And if you weren't a Pantera fan, I don't want to know you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. just put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I, love, yeah. you know, I love the band. They really did fucking change my life. And, uh... You know, so it's kind of like talking to your hero or whatever, but talking, being talked to with respect and, you know, uh, no no attitude, no ego, no nothing, and just fucking went down to Texas and literally got in a room and just fucking fired it up. And, uh, it was, you know, we were down there for two weeks and wrote about nine songs. I think I wrote about, I don't know, probably five or six, and then went home for a couple weeks recharged came back down wrote three more you know blah 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 blah, blah. and it was just like dun, 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 you know and then uh, put the first record out <clears throat> and uh, and then you go on mud. tour and you find out even more about each yeah, other yeah yeah well yeah and then you become friends and then but it's like the one good thing about this band and it's awesome and you, really anything I've ever done we don't sit around and talk about what we're gonna do you just do it we just do it yeah but it's weird because it's that unfucking spoken thing everybody's always on the same page that's what's weird you know when we did the second record we were all on the same page as what we wanted to do as a second record you know what I mean because I was um, kind of exploring that other side of myself and uh, we wanted to do songs that would have never flown in Pantera or Damage Plan or Mudvayne or Nothing Face you know that's what we wanted to do Yeah. and then the next thing you know it's like I've kind of like said, you know, uh, bands are forced families and you kind of pull away from each other and I'd kind of pulled away from Mudvayne and then, you know, uh, hell yeah, I was really become, you know, what I was going to do. Um, and uh, there might be another day for, for Mudvayne might come again. Uh, we all still talk and we're all cool, but it's like, That's good. you know, we, uh, it was weird. It was like, you know, once that was kind of out of the picture and hell yeah, I was going to be uh, kind of my priority um, or whatever. Um, I never aspired to be a rock singer. You know what I mean? And hell yeah, the second record was pretty rock driven. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Very rock definitely. driven. Hell Raised my eyebrows a couple yeah, of times. Hell yeah, hell the time and you know, songs like that or whatever. And uh, I never aspired to be that. So I'm thinking like, you know, it's fucking got to go back to heavy because that's what I want to be. I'm a metal singer. That's what I want to do. So the third record, you know, is definitely more metal uh, and uh, heavier. Yeah. Um, but still, then it's still an element. Yeah, there was still an element that, you know, like, yeah, the drink, drink, drunk and, you yeah. know, shit like that. You know, still, yeah. still a par- fucking party band. And, you know, we partied a lot. So it, it has its place, man. Trust me. Yeah. I would never just be like, no, that doesn't fucking fit. No, it fit. It, that, that's what we do. Drink, drink, drunk. That's what we do. So uh, it's part of, like I said, one of, one of those things. Like, you, we just don't overthink it and shit like that. And we get, you know, this time we just, I think that that last record was just setting us up for this record. We were trying to, like, constantly we've been trying to work back to who we used to be in Hell Yeah. And it takes a process. You yeah. can't just go from the second record to this record. You know, yeah. there is a transitional point, but I, I, I think it has validity. I think it, I think it's real. You know, I don't think it was like, okay, we're gonna use this fucking record as a stepping stone to get to the next thing, and who gives a shit? Fuck that. You know, if I'm doing it. I'm doing it, 100. percent You know. Yeah. And I believe in that record fully. You know, and all of them. You know. Uh, I mean, well, I, I, I mean, I think, I think this is your best. I think this is your best work. I, I, hands down. Um, yeah. And and I also think that um, there is, I think there's going to be a lot of people who are surprised about it. I think I, I think there's going to be people who 
who kind of have Hell Yeah in a in a pigeonhole mm-hmm. that they're not that they're, it's like not really my thing. Mm-hmm. And then they're gonna hear they're gonna hear a single. Mm-hmm. They're gonna hear uh, you know they're gonna hear a bit and they're gonna go really mm-hmm. that that what that's that's mm-hmm. that's Hell Yeah yeah oh, yeah wow yeah I think it's, so. it's it's almost like this is the album that the like you say, you know that you've that you've been building towards. It's mm-hmm. like, this is the almost first album, if you like. It's a uh, where, where you've all kind exactly. Of just we kind of thought that was the last record. When when, when before we had you, this record, you, you always do. Though, yeah, 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 yeah. It's always your, your newest work. Yeah, your yeah. newest work should always be your most favorite work. Yeah, and know, if it is, it, well, it's the major, fresh, yeah, yeah it's, it's the freshest thing. You know what I mean? It's yeah. the freshest thing in your mind. It, well, yeah, it's the thing you haven't played the songs a fucking million times. You know what I mean? So yeah, but. You know, uh, the last record we felt like was the record that people had been waiting for this lineup. You know, Chad and Vinny and Tom and you know Greg and, and, and Bob and stuff. Like we felt like the last record was the record that everybody had been waiting to hear from this particular group of individuals getting together and becoming Hell Yeah. You know, now it's different because now I feel like this is the record. <laughs> you know, and yeah. whatever. But like I said, we don't discuss it. We just do it. We don't talk about. We don't sit down and have this big fucking meeting, and twist our mustaches, and be like, "Huh, oh, what are we gonna do to take over the world?" It's not like that, you know. Like fucking plotting shit on, you know, schematics and and the fucking drafting and stuff. It's like it's not like that. We're just like, we know where we want to go, just yeah. naturally and emotionally. Just like we just let our just emotions just kind of take us right where we need to go. And I feel like we've gotten there. I mean, I feel like that this is really exactly where we need to be well, I, I couldn't imagine a better a better situation to be in than, than having working with, worked with Kevin he well, was so it, fucking that, well, great well, that, the, the, the good news is that's how it sounds as well, well thank you know, you. just thank somebody you who's much. not in the in the inner circle yeah, as thank it were you. To, you know, as, as, a, as a mundane fan I mean mm-hmm. I, I actually I saw you guys when you London show of the end of all things mm-hmm. tour, I think I I saw you guys there and, and so I've I, you know I've, I've followed Hell Yeah I was a Pantera fan as well so right right you know, so I've Followed the journey as well, yeah, yeah, you know, and um, and yeah, because you know, you know what it's like. Sometimes you hear you you hear you hear bands like opinion of their own music, and you think, wow, that's like mm. it doesn't. You're, you're too close to it. It doesn't mm. kind of work that that way, you know. Right. Uh, but I can honestly say that you know, from an outsider looking in, listening in, it's mm. um, that's definitely the that's definitely where it sounds like to me. It sounds like awesome. you know, everybody's. No, that's that's the one. Yeah. And, like said, and it, it did sound, it, it, you know, you, you know, you're not wrong. The last album did sound, you know. Yeah. It was like, ah, oh, right, okay, yeah, no, no. no this makes more sense than that one yeah, than the last yeah, one before yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that makes more, you know. And yeah. now, and now it's like, oh no, this is complete sense, mm-hmm. you know. And you've you, you you captured that, you've captured that sort of period in time where everybody's just, yeah, you've, you like I say, you've got back to who you are. And you, you, you're always trying, I think, in life or whatever. You're always trying to get back to yourself because life will pull you in different directions. I mean, they will. It'll, it'll, it'll just take you. And then sometimes that's the fight. You know, it's trying to trying to find the, 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 the you know the rising tide, like trying to find the way the wave to get back to the fucking beach. You know what I mean? Because you're being sucked out. You know, it's just like. And you know it is a transition. I mean, it, t- it takes a minute. And, and like I said, we weren't going to go from wham wham. But I don't think that we could have done the record we did now without the last record. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, we needed yeah. that. You can't okay. go. Yeah, yeah. You know you what I mean? You but can't, it was you can't uns- go from A to C. Yeah, there's yeah. got to be a B. Yeah, you know, there's got to be a B. And it was unfucking spoken. And that's what I love about it. And that is that DMF fucking honesty and integrity, uh, that integral part of who we are. We believe in what we do. We love each other as, as friends and brothers. We love to create with each other, and we love to, you know, we care about each other, and we care about our fucking music. We care about the product. We care about the end. You know what I mean? And it's like, but we don't, like I said, we're not twisting our mustaches. We're not fucking drafting. We're not trying to. We're not li- drawing a schematic for how to do it. We do, and yeah. we don't discuss it. We just get in a fucking room and just go. You know what I mean? And it just like you have to trust in that instinct. You know what I mean? And if it doesn't doesn't make sense or it doesn't fit fit the fucking vibe and. You know, I've told Tom so many times, I'm like, here's the deal, dude. If it's not the greatest fucking riff you've ever written, then shock the shit. Get rid of it. Don't even bring in a fucking half-ass riff. Don't even bring it in. You know what I mean? And and I was like, I'm thinking to myself, like, if everybody does that, just goes, oh my God, this melody line is the best melody I've ever created. These lyrics are the best lyrics I've ever created. That's fucking awesome. That works. 
if like if I'm just fucking limp dick and half assing through it and like yeah these lyrics are okay ah, this melody line's okay but that doesn't work that's yeah. not that's not success that's not like okay now this is for me and I'm fulfilled now I want to share it with people this is like ah eh, yeah it's for me but it's just whatever yeah and I don't care if I share it or not <laughs> well who <laughs> wants to go through life that way well exactly you know and the I mean? thing is you want, you want to be excited about getting in that studio don't you you want to God be excited right. about that. I cannot wait to yeah. get this stuff down yeah, I can't was... wait for people to hear this I like, can't wait to get out on stage and, and, and play these tunes live and mm-hmm. it's that that whole because yeah, that's what keeps you going isn't it that's yeah, what because if you are half half ass as you say you are going to end up halfway on a tour in the middle of eastern Europe somewhere miserable as fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. just going I, I don't want to do this mm. I just do not want to do this and and who is going to buy into that <laughs> yeah yeah Dude, what, what kid in the crowd is going to look up and just be like wow this dude just yeah. looks fucking defeated. Yeah, wow, well, you know, I wish I could be brought up. Yeah, I wish I could be as defeated as that fucking guy. Fuck that. I want to be electric. You know, yeah. I mean, like I said, it's that it's that living to being alive. I want to be alive. I want to be electric on stage. I want to fucking I want to fucking entertain and I want to share my music, uh, our music with 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 everyone that wants to that cares to fucking pay attention. Yeah. And listen to it. You know, and I want to do it as best as we can. And you know what? I'm gonna fucking crack and I'm gonna sing stupid fucking notes and I'm gonna, you know, do this and that and that's, and Tom's gonna miss a fucking a, a lick and fucking hit a wrong note and Vinny's gonna drop a drum beat here and there or whatever. That's live. That's, 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 that's you're fucking in the moment. Yeah, totally. You know, totally. sometimes you're going to, for it so hard. You're so fucking passionate about it. It's just like everything's kind of going off the rails, but you don't give a shit. You know what I mean? So, whatever. You know? Well, hey, hey, look, hey, how many times you've been in the studio and somebody, somebody fucks up and you keep it? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's like, whoa, Some of the no, best actually, parts have been yeah. created through an accident. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, literally, like, uh, you know, but, I mean, I, there, I have examples from, like, my band shit where there was just, like, some kind of a dropped beat or something, and Greg just, like, kind of slid into it or something, and that wasn't the exact part that we kept, but it, it, it sparked something like, yeah. wow, that's kind of a cool, like, what if we made that break there, which is such an odd fucking place to put a break, you know what I mean? And we're just yeah. like, we're halfway through this fucking, this uh, verse measure or something. And we just, like, we just break the motherfucker and then we slide back into it because somebody fucked up. Yeah. You know, it, not saying we kept the exact fuck up, but that fuck up <laughs> created something that ended up on the finished product that was a little more controlled than the fuck up. But, yeah, you know, no, but it inspired, it inspired the controlled chaos. Yeah, yeah no, I've, 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 I, I, I remember... I remember clearly we were, we were recording an album. Bass player did a bass run. It was like a, it was a bass break stop. Bass, um, and and he had like a muscle twitch when he did it. Uh-huh. And, and we kept it because yeah. there's no way that's ever getting recreated. Yeah, and yeah. It just sounds insane because yeah. it just goes all over the beat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it fits. The nice. notes are there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but because of that, like that that that, yeah. that twitch, it was like no. Wait, I mean, we can never recreate that. But. I don't care. That the is Twitch like kind of like created its own little triplet or something. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it, and it was yeah, but he would have never thought to put it there. No, no way. Nobody would have ever thought to put it there. But he has a he has a fucking spasm. Now it's created this triplet. Yeah. And you're like, that's fucking amazing. And I'm sure I can recreate that on stage or whatever. Yeah. So we can keep it. But you know what? We want let's keep that just for the energy of what that part was. Yeah, totally. And, and that's and, great. And, 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 and of course, it's always like the guy does it. And goes, oh, okay, no, go back. I, I fucked it up, and everybody's in the control room going, no, 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 and no, he's no, going, no, fuck that, no, I don't <laughs> yeah, want to keep it. Yeah, 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 you're yeah. Like, no, 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 trust <laughs> me, trust <laughs> me, trust <laughs> me. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. It's like, no, 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 no. Look, leave it a day. Yeah, Mate, yeah. If you hate it tomorrow, okay, you right, shouldn't right. have to live with it. We'll take. But believe you me, you're gonna love it. We'll know? fight tomorrow, so. and we're still gonna win. But <laughs> yeah, if you want to yeah, think, if you want to take a day to think on it, go ahead. Yeah, it's still three or four against one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You effectively got no choice. But go have some beers and fall in love with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so you're going to be, I mean, you're going to be out on the road for years on this, aren't you? Daco. Right. Sorry, dude. No, it's alright. We're just, um, we're just ordering some drinks here, folks. It's all good. I just product placed right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, did a, I did a product placement. Or, or Diet Pepsi, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have no idea, but it could be Diet fucking RC. I have no idea what I'm drinking. Yeah, whatever it is, it'll be very expensive. Yeah. So the last one, this one took uh, about 20 minutes to get, so... Uh, right, okay. Yeah. I was like, you know what, Just I'm just going to roll with it because that anticipation of 
getting a drink that I waited 20 minutes for ultimately becomes the greatest drink you've ever had in your life. So this was the greatest DC or DP or whatever Diet Coke or Diet Coke that I've ever had in my life. Right, you you really have spent a lot of years on the road. That's a that's a I mindset. Really that's a mindset that takes some fucking work. Well, at least that I can is. still do that. I'm yeah. not fucking breaking shit because it takes me 20 minutes to get a Diet Coke. So. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. At some level, and, my feet are still on the ground. And, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, yeah, and you're, and you're not working 12-hour days fucking yeah. lifting heavy shit up and right. wishing you were doing fucking something else. Fucking bricklaying. Yeah. Tell you what, yeah. I've done that, bored concrete, built houses, was a laborer for concrete, was a laborer for houses, built tires. I mean, I fucking died. You pretty much name it. Worked in the food service industry, dishwashing, you know, busting tables, all that shit. I've done pretty much anything you can ever imagine outside of fucking rocket science or something that requires a lot of intellect <laughs> but then you but then you come in but then you come into the music business and I mean it, it's kind of almost the, the, the timing of your, your own personal career in the music business you've seen you've seen it change beyond mm-hmm. recognition I've seen it change so much that it retroverted back to what was going on when I started you know what I mean like literally like I mean how many bands have you heard now or whatever that kind of have that kind of like Metallica Master of Puppets, you know, or Metallica Ride the Lightning kind of sound yeah. and stuff. It's like literally Metallica created this sound and Megadeth and all the thrash bands of yeah. the day, they created those sounds and yeah. shit way back in the day. This is like 81, oh, 82, nice. 83. I'm, and that shit has come all the way through and literally retroverted back to something that happened 30 fucking years ago. Yeah. You know, there yeah. are young kid, young bands that play that style of music now, which is kind of fucking awesome because yeah. I loved it then. You know, well, so no, I'm not going to fucking say, yeah, you can't do that. Well, I, look, I, got, I got a whole career out of, you know, out of exactly that. Exactly. Being you fans, being, but, that land, that, hearing that sound again, right, we're, we're going to do this. I remember being on tour in Europe, you know, John Connolly from Nuclear Assault saying, just remember, guys. That's great, man. Just I remember, guys, man. we're all hanging on to Metallica's coattails. Mm. You know, just yeah. they opened the door for us yeah, all. Yeah, they we're, did. Like we are, we're, we're all dining out, you know, on, on their dime. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's like a whole wave. And as you say, it's it's, it's all coming back. There's that, and bands are reforming, and mm-hmm. you know, it's. And that music, those the, the music from those bands is still fucking viable. Like those guys can still play. Slayer can still play. Megadeth can yeah. still play. Metallica can still play. Fucking. You know, well, Anthrax name is, any Anthrax is Anthrax last album. Fucking, I mean, that's one yeah, of the best albums. Great, great record. Testament. I mean, fucking, the list goes on and on. And yeah. those guys are still playing. Whether it's like the here and now, or if it's underground, metal is always there. It's just, yeah. it's, it's about the people um, in the world. You know what I mean? That can, that like, let it have its uprising to being like that is mainstream. And then it ducks back down again. Yeah. It's not mainstream now. Now it is mainstream. And that, yeah. of course, usually takes about five or so years, you know, for the resurgencies of it. But it always happens. It's like all, it, the Slayer it, yeah. and fucking Metallica and all those guys, and Anthrax and Megadeth, and generally play the same amount of people. They do, generally play to the same people. You know what I mean? That listen. I mean, I guarantee you, there's probably. You know, several thousand people at every fucking show that saw them maybe on their first fucking tour any one of those bands you know yeah. they were standing there when they yeah. were 15 years old and now they're fucking you are know, you, 40 you, you're looking at, you are looking at one of those guys yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. Rain and Blood Tour 1985 there you um, go man you know, fucking great record here I am 43 years old and uh, you know Rain and Blood still the one great slash album yep. that, that I, I love am. that back. You know, I love and, that fucking record. And, and if Slayer are playing, you know, if Slayer are playing two nights in London tomorrow, I'm there both nights. You know, and I'm t- I'm t- t- you know, all my friends are there. Yeah. And you know, and some of them have got families and kids. Some of them bring their kids along. Oh yeah. You know, and and it's it's you know it's 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 awesome. It's a, it's a back to that word that you used. It's a brotherhood. You know. It really it's, is. Um, man. That's why it was so. That's why it was like so painful when when Jeff passed. Oh was, man, that was that was um, huge. That was huge. That was fucking huge. I mean, we were all really bummed and fucked up about that, man. It's like, dude, that's like one of your fucking heroes, man. He's yeah. a hero. He's a legend, and I'm sure that legacy and the legendary will fucking will carry on for a long, long time. As long as those records are still around that he played on, that he kicked fucking ass on, you know that you know 
his mark is on those records, his signature is on those records and stuff. And it's like, that'll never go away. It's that living legacy that'll happen. And those records will continue to sell and they'll continue yeah. to be listened to and stuff, you know. I don't think but it was, it was, it was out. But I remember one of the, my first stories of, uh, we were playing in, uh, we were playing in Vancouver, Canada. It was Mud Vane. It was like 2000, 2001, something like that. And we were playing this this club or whatever. It was outside of Vancouver, Canada. And we get on stage. And this is back like in the early, 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 early days on the first record or whatever. And we opened with Dig. We put that, so that was the first song. We come out with yeah. Dig and open with Dig. And Great we got, thank you. And we got maybe three quarters of the way through it. And the whole fucking power goes out in the whole place. And we're like, oh, fuck. You know, so they're like, it took them took forever. So we go back out on the bus sitting out there where I don't think there was even a backstage it was such a small little place go back out on the bus and um, they're like okay gotta go and come back in we're like well what do we do you know, we go to the second song I'm like fuck it let's just start over again you know everybody loves that song anyway so we just start playing Dig again about halfway through it this time power goes out again and we're just like what the fuck so we uh, we go back to the bus again and they just come out they just called it they're like you know it's over we're like, fuck, really? Okay, well, whatever. I mean, they couldn't get the power to come yeah. back on, so it was, that was it. It was done. I was just so bummed out for all the, for all the, you know, countless tens of people that were there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, a couple hundred people or whatever. But fucking, uh, just knock on the bus door or whatever, and you know, our tour manager goes and answers the door, and it's fucking Carrie King and Jeff Hannum. What? Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? And they come up walking over like, hey, what's up? I'm just like. I didn't even really know them. Yeah. I didn't know them. Like, I'd never met them or anything like that. I'm the fucking standing face to face with fucking Kerry King and Jeff Hanneman on my bus. You know, I'm just like, what the fuck? And they come on, and we were just sitting there. We started bullshitting and stuff. And I mean, I am just fucking beyond struck. You know, I mean, I was a little kid, you know, when I, you know, fell in love with Slayer and, 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 and that whole movement of music. And uh, that they were a part of, and a huge part of it, uh, you know, the whole Big Four vibe or whatever. And uh, back and forth was the Big Four, you yeah. know. And uh, you know, so to stand there and talk with with Hanneman and, and Kerry was so fucking cool, man, because they were so so cool. Oh, that's so, cool. And they were both fans, both fans of the band, and shit. We didn't even know, and I'm like, I couldn't believe it, man. I mean, literally, we sat there and had some drinks and, and cut up and laughed and you know talked and talked about music and. Shit, and I mean that was one of probably one of my single greatest like moments looking back in my life. I mean I just told you the story like pretty much fucking verbatim exactly how it went down, and that was fucking a long time ago that that happened. But it'll always be be something I take to my grave. And that that's and, and 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 all from like a, a gig and a big fuck up, two power failures, the yeah, whole yeah. thing falling. It's like, destiny. Yeah, destiny. Mm-hmm. everything happens for a reason. Made it well, all worth it. Yeah, for yeah. A reason. Yeah, made it cool. all worth it. All right, well, look, um, uh, thank you so much for your time, Chad. It's yeah, did you want to talk really about nice the road? I don't care. I don't, I don't really you have should? anything. Yeah. I mean, if you want to talk about it real quick, or the road. Um, there was, a, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to find out about you going on the road, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, just, by the way, just, uh, yeah. to ca- catch you up here, folks, I've, I've been, I've had the tap to say, uh, finish the interview, but Chad is saying, no, fuck that, let's just, uh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's talk going. a little bit this more. Okay. okay, cool. Um, yeah, are, are you, are you going to be on the road, like, forever now? Are you going to be... You know? I hope. I mean, I hope that we. I mean, I hope that we fire this up. Last the last record we toured for about three or four months before the fucking record came out, and then we were with Volbeat in America. Oh, and the that last, sucks, yeah, the last like the record had been out. We were with Volbeat, and it was awesome. Love Volbeat. Love all the guys. And uh, and uh, I think the record came out, and it was a long tour. You know, obviously when Volbeat comes to America, they fucking run the gamut of America. It just makes it's more cost effective. Yeah, like, yeah, come over there yeah, for a yeah. while and cover everything. So the tour was probably you know a good nine or ten weeks. It was it was a long tour, eight weeks, nine weeks, ten weeks. Fuck, I don't know. It was a long time. And uh, all I know is that our record had been out a week, and then that tour ended. We just fucking sat at home for two months, yeah. and that sucked. It's like wow. we're supposed to be supporting this record, and we weren't out. You know, and then we like fired it back up again and stuff like that. You know, we've been really been on the. You know every like facet of our of our business people, uh, you know from uh, management to label to you know booking agents and stuff like that. Like, don't wait till the fucking eleventh hour to start pitching us for tours or putting things together. Let's let's stay ahead of the game so we can stay on the road. 
and you know so a big big part of uh, you know what we want to do is like I don't want to just tour America all the time you know what I mean like uh, do you think, do you think this prob- album do you think this album's a little bit uh, I mean sorry to cut across you, no, there, no, you, no. you made it you made it it's like Hell Yeah is, is very American you know you've got that that southern vibe yeah, 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 and, totally. and, um, and, 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 and and that kind of dilutes as you go through the albums mm-hmm. and and would you say like the new album is more sort of international? I think so. Kind of. Yeah, I thought the last album one was. You know what I mean? I've okay. always want to be a viable piece of international, you know, uh, yeah. exposure. Which, you know which what metal I mean? is? Let's face yeah, it. It's, yeah. it's yeah. an international music. It really is. But, and, and you're right. It, 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 it's, it has kind of sort of you know diluted issues. You you were saying about you know being feeling like you're a rock singer and getting back to metal. Mm. But especially with the new album, it, it, mm. it, it does it, 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 it does kind of sound like almost like that thing when people heard you guys were getting together. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah, yeah. this is the culmination okay, of sense. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's not um, like like no, there's no fucking scratch in your head like oh these guys no it's like okay it's very clear you know this record is like definitely a very awesome extension of what we all do and brought together you know what yeah. I mean so you know and I've been I've talked about it and it's not just because I'm doing an interview in the UK I want to do a proper UK tour I want to do a proper like I want to be like. I want to play everywhere. I want to play South America. You know what I mean? I want to play four or five cities in, in Japan, you know, which we played Nagoya, Osaka in, in Japan or in or Tokyo now in Japan. Uh, we've been to Australia a couple times and stuff like that. It's like I just, you know, talk to the label and booking agents and everybody and like, we, I want to spread out. I know it's going to, you got to take your lumps, man. We've never been to South America. So, you know, I know we're going to go down there and take our lumps and, and, and fucking eat it. You know what I mean? Or whatever. But you got to go. And we fucking believe in this record so much. It's like we want to go. We make that one fucking run and fucking and eat it. You know what I mean? And and take our lumps on it. And I guarantee you, it'll be the only time because we're that passionate about it. We know that if we can get up in front of people and play this music, that people will enjoy hearing us play this music. You know, yeah. they're going to enjoy the music. I know that. You know, so I believe that you have to go service the people if you're going to sell a fucking record in fucking Zimbabwe then you better go to fucking Zimbabwe and play the goddamn record you have to go service your fans wherever you sell a record Yeah. you know what I mean and, and go play for them and it's like I'm tired of you know putting a record out somewhere and not really going over and properly uh, being able to uh, perform for, for those people you know what yeah. I mean and if it's going to sell all over the UK then I want to play all over the UK if it's going to sell all over Europe then I want to sell all I want to play all over Europe it's going to play in Russia they're selling Russia and I want to play in Russia and so on and so on and so on and so well, on the know, thing is always, there's, there's very much it, it, you, you, you want people to have the hell yeah experience as opposed to oh just another band at a festival yeah. and it's like yeah they, they, you know, they, they were cool but they were playing under the same lights that you know mm-hmm. the three bands before and played under and the backdrop no changed and, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah no lights in the middle of the no, day yeah, how much yeah, does that suck one o'clock uh, yeah and, and oh you know the backdrop changed and, and mm-hmm. that was it but you know, yeah you want, you, want, you want people to have that, that close Absolutely. personal and also there's something about people coming to see you and your music and oh absolutely they, you know that, that's you can play anything you can play any one of your songs you know what I mean and people are going to be like ah cool yeah I know yeah, yeah you haven't got that you know prescriptive I mean? well we've yeah, got to yeah. play that and yeah, we've yeah, got to yeah. play that because yeah. it's the greatest it's festival set and we can do that man I mean we can move shit in and out of the set pretty quick I mean we just need you know uh, we do it every record we get together and we learn you know, we work it out between the, the band we get together in a room and we play the fucking we learn the record top to bottom to play it together sometimes you know in recording situations especially in this situation where I basically went in with nothing you know we haven't really played these songs together you know what I mean but we'll get in and we'll work them out and once we work them out we can have a sound check and throw a, throw a new song in like oh, why don't we play this today you know and we'll fucking we'll sound check it and run through it because we've already worked it out and it just becomes muscle memory retraining those muscles to go back to the spot where you know you train them to go you know what I mean or whatever so it'll be good I'm, I'm excited about it man we're excited to get over here we're excited to play Europe and, and, and all over the world man you know I don't want to just I certainly don't want to sit at home you know what I mean I'm fucking <laughs> sit at home for a month I'd rather be here for a month or fucking go somewhere else for a month you know working that's what I do you create and then you go fucking work created it now I want to go work you know yeah. what I mean I don't want to create kind of work <laughs> and then go yeah. sit and fucking like that hotel day off you're talking about eh, maybe yeah maybe we're one out maybe I'll go fucking 
catch a flick, maybe I'll go fucking get a beer or whatever. You know, just like, fuck that. If I'm working, I'll be working. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and you want and you want that buzz of you want that buzz of the show, don't you? You know, I'll be alive. It's it's weird because it's it's kind of like the opposite the way most people live their lives. Because most people are like, yeah, I gotta fucking work all week, and I'm looking forward to the weekend when yeah. I don't have to, you know, when I, I don't have to do anything. Yeah. You know, and it's the other way around. Yeah. It's like, I'm not looking forward to time off. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. looking forward to. Being on stage, that's my job. If I'm, that's, that's what I fucking do, and that's what I want to do. And then you, and, and of course, you, you, you create the record, and it, it's yours, it's uh-huh. yours, and then it gets released, and it's no longer yours. It's, nope, it's, it belongs to everybody. Everybody else is now, and everyone everybody. else has got their, uh, no, this is what this song's about. Yeah, I think yeah, you'll yeah. find. No, yeah. no, I think you'll find it's about this. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Cool. I like to write open into them, too. I want to make let people take the. Uh, the songs and yeah they can fucking read the lyrics or whatever and, and I write pretty open uh, doesn't necessarily mean this you know what I mean so it's like uh, when people can take a song and like kind of bring it into their lives and make it applicable yeah. to their life or whatever it pulls them that much closer to it you know what I mean and, and, you know, and that's what I want you know what I mean a life is work and, and uh, uh, that's a different kind of work well, we've all been there when we've when you've, you've heard a you've heard a tune and it and it just resonates with you about Absolutely. either something you're going through or could have been, something yeah. you've have you have experienced and you know I in mean, the way in the way that I interpreted it, it could be a fucking light year away from what they thought of when they were writing it. You yeah. know what I mean? The the, yeah. the actual the, the guy that penned it, whoever that is, had a certain idea of what the song was in his mind, and I heard it and it fucking struck a chord with me. And it's the other side of the world from where he was writing from. But yeah, it doesn't absolutely. fucking matter because now, yeah. like I said, it belongs to me now. You know what I mean? It's not your song anymore. It's my fucking song, and that's cool. You know what I mean? And any true artist would be like, that's fine, and well, that's how I am. It's well, it's funny. So sort of, sitting here talking to you, that I had that exact experience. I lost my father seven, eight years ago, yeah, and sorry. Um, that's one of those things, unfortunately. Um, and I'm I'm not a Neil Diamond fan. I've sung mm. a few of his tunes to to warm up, you mm-hmm. know, to warm up before because it's yeah. quite it's right in my range. But mm. uh, and I came across this song, funnily enough, called Hell Yeah, from the Twelve Songs album that he did with Rick Rubin. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I, I heard it, and I was just I was just a mess. You know, by the yeah. end of that tune, I was just like, oh my god. The weird thing is, it's a it's a happy, it's a quite a happy. Uh. Right. You know, redemptive song, mm-hmm. but it just pushed so many of my buttons at that particular time, and I can't listen to that song without. I mean, I love it, mm-hmm. but it's it's hard work to listen to because yeah. it's emotionally draining mm-hmm. to listen to. Um, and yet, it's like I say, it's a happy, uplifting tune. It's mm-hmm. you know, it's it's him singing about how happy he is with mm-hmm. his life and what he's done and, mm-hmm. and everything else. But it just struck a chord. You put it somewhere else. You put it in a different box. Yeah. And that's okay, but that's life. You know, going through that, uh, uh, like you said, it's, it's hard for you to listen to, but it's it's part of the process of healing. It's part of the process. And if it's not making you emotional, or, you know, then there's a problem. If it is making you emotional, then that is something that you attribute to that place of the loss of your father, stuff like that. That's a really good thing. Yeah. You know, it's a really good thing because it takes you back and puts you back in those moments. There's some. There's a reason why you're getting upset because you're missing. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, and it, and it's you know it's doing good work. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And it sucks. The process does suck, but it is a healing process. And someday you'll probably be able to hear it. And, no, you're absolutely and, you know right. I mean? Yeah. You know? I mean, I heard it. I heard it for the first time in a long time a couple of, a couple of months ago, and I was like, I, I pretty much got through it. You know, yeah, yeah. You know I got, got to the end. Yeah. But it, it, yeah, I mean, it's um, I mean, seriously have yeah, check it out, man. It's it's oh, a, it's a, it's a, well, it's called cool, hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, how no, can, I've, I've how got can to. You I can't. I can't believe I've never heard of. I'm not a big Neil Diamond fan. I got to be honest with you. No, I'm not, there are two I'm not kinds of people in this world. There's Neil Diamond <laughs> fans and they're not Neil Diamond fans. Oh, I thought it was people who had tattoos and didn't have tattoos. <laughs> no, I'm no, no, it's, I'm all, it's, it's all about Neil. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, I should have known that, really. Yeah. I should have known that. Well, that's a, that's actually a line in What About Bob with Bill Murray. There's two kinds of people in this world. People that like Neil Diamond, people that don't. My wife loved him. <laughs> well, he has got a pretty awesome voice, man. He could have sung metal, definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's... Uh, Pretty sure. awesome. But I can't. I can't. I can't believe we're talking about Neil Diamond now. But uh, that's my man. fault. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> cool. It's been awesome. All right, man. Yeah. Look. Um. Let, let's let's wrap that up because uh, I'm sure your publicist wants me to. That's where to, you stop. To leave anywhere. It's a perfect place to stop. Neil it is Diamond. really. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We've gone full circle to that Neil we, Diamond. We, we have yeah. gone full circle. <laughs> cool. It starts here and it goes to Neil Diamond. 
there's nowhere else to go. Yeah, this is cool. a good place to well, stop. It's lovely to meet you, Charlie. Very nice thank to you meet very you. much. Thank time. you very much. Thanks thank to everybody at home. And cool. Enjoy. Well, the, the, uh, the, the, the podcast is called Talking Bollocks. Which is like, you know, yeah. talking rubbish. Yeah, yeah. So we, we've talked a lot of bollocks. Yeah, we have talked okay. a lot of bollocks. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome, yes. dude. So um, there you have it. Uh, uh, what a cool guy. What a cool guy. I mean, um, I, it was just it was just great. It, it was, it's hard to explain. And I, I don't want to make this sound, um, I, I'm already, uh, already this is <laughs> sounding a little bit sort of homoerotic. No, I'm not gay for Chad. Um, but it, it, it was weird. It was like two guys who'd never met before. Um, we, yeah, we had a bit in common. Um, and we talked a little bit before the interview. And actually, quite a lot afterwards, after the interview, we actually hung out for about sort of 15 minutes. We were talking comedy. I'd recently seen Bill Burr, and he's a big fan of Bill Burr. So we had a, we had a, like a chat there. And as you heard during the interview, it was only, I was only supposed to have half an hour. And the PR guy came over and sort of gave me a tug to say half an hour. And, and well, as you heard, you know, and Chad was like, no, no, let's, you know, let's just carry on. This is fun. And it just, what a genuine guy. You meet all sorts of people, um, uh, you know, in, various, in, in the entertainment industry as such, you know, in comedy and in, in music. You're, you're always going to meet dicks. You're always going to meet people who are who are very good in interviews. But, you know, they just, they, they kind of, they know what they're doing. And it's just, it's a bit, kind of a machine to them. Um I, I, it was just there was just something in the air that day that I mean you know I don't I don't go around talking about the fact that I lost my father seven years ago to to just anyone but it it, it really had just the 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 walls had broken down of of um uh of kind of interview and technique or whatever we, we kind of just forgot the mic was there and just just really just talked and um what just what a really really cool guy um and um you know and i'm really looking forward to seeing um seeing hell yeah the the album is was, was is great it was a surprise um i said so i got the first album quite liked it um but he's just so honest in there you know talking about like you know um, i'm you know i'm a metal singer and this is too rock and roll and it's just yeah just really really refreshing really refreshing to to do an interview with somebody who's just willing to go with you anywhere and just I, I hope, look, I hope you really, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was, um, whether you like Mudvayne or Hell Yeah or don't like any of them, I hope that was a, an enjoyable interview. I hope it was as much fun to do, to listen to as it was to do. And there we go, a nice cheesy, um, cheesy sum up there for you. Um, and, and one thing I didn't do at the top, by the way, was uh, was thank um, Corpus, sorry, Copus Skull Rusher. Okay, Copus Skull Rusher is not a band, right? Don't go booking YouTube in it. That is the um, that is the um, iTunes ID of the only person to leave a review of Talking Bollocks on iTunes so far. And I just want to say thank you very much, mate. Wherever you're from, whatever you do, I hope you prosper in life. Um, I hope you win your national lottery if you have a natural lottery in the country you're from. Um, I hope everything you do in life turns out fucking brilliantly because uh, there is no greater feeling than getting feedback from people and that feedback reading like you could have written it yourself and no i didn't so don't start that shit okay no honestly i didn't um it was copus skull rusher um and to read uh, to read a critique uh, to read a review of um critique who the fuck do i think i am uh, <laughs> to read a review of um uh, of your show that like I said that you could have written yourself it's just like it just says everything that I, that I wanted this and, and me and everybody all about wanted this podcast to be so thank you so much I really, really do appreciate you taking the time as for the rest of you cunts get on iTunes and fucking review us for fuck's sake what do I have to do it only takes a few seconds just tick five stars out of five and write what a fucking brilliant podcast wow he's such a nice bloke um yeah, oh yeah, obviously. Look, just go on there, write what you like, slag me off. That's absolutely fine. No problem with that. But as I do at the end of every podcast, I want to say, because it's getting towards that time, folks, um, I just don't want to say, look, thank you. Thank you very much. If this is your first time, if you if you joined us because of Hell Yeah and Chad, I hope you enjoyed these bits. And please, you know, um, subscribe on iTunes, subscribe on Podkicker, on, um, uh, on if you're on Android, if you're on Windows Phone, um, Podcast Lounge is, um, is, is the app to have. Um, and please, just find us, just type in Talking Bollocks, there it is, 
we're the only we're the only talking bollocks podcast out there um and subscribe please do subscribe that would be awesome we are coming up just short of 9000 listens to the first three podcasts so far that is fucking amazing Give, give yourselves a round of applause. There it is. It, there it is right there. As patronising as that is. Yes, I did just do that. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for, for listening. Thanks for... Uh, and please subscribe. And remember, and, and I'm going to remind you of this. Anybody listening for the first time, this is new, but any of you guys who have, have done this, please, you know, tweet us. Let us know you've done it. Any, any of your friends who next time you see them, doesn't matter if they're into metal or not. I, I said it did, but no, fuck that, right? Any friends, when you're out, ask if, they, if they're if they into podcasts. And if they are, ask them if, if you're out, if they've got a phone on them, have you got a podcast app on your phone? If they say yes, just say, can I have a look at it? Take the phone, open the podcast app, type in Talking Bollocks, get the podcast, subscribe, close the app, give them the phone back, and just say, I've done your favour. Okay? That's cool. That's all we're after. It's just a nice little guerrilla way of increasing the increasing the subscribes, increasing air group. So just do that. If you're around at someone's house, on their laptop, uh, you know, on their on their on their tablet, fucking eye shit pad, um, whatever it is. Yeah, just and they don't have to be in the room when you do this. Yeah, just sneakily open the app, talking bollocks, subscribe. No one needs to know, but you and me, that's absolutely fine. So, uh, so yeah, um, just just do it, okay? Um, please help spread the word. Um, spread the word on Twitter as well if you can. That'd be really, really cool. At Talking Bollocks, um, you're bound to find me. I'm not going to start fucking spelling it all out again. Like, to be honest, I can't be fucking asked. Um, but uh, but there you go. And it would be really great to hear from you if you want to tweet or at uh, Howard at allabouttherock.co.uk would love to know uh, people where you are what country you're in um, any requests any bands you want us to get to interview I'm going to be honest with you now the more people that subscribe the more listens we get the bigger our figures the bigger the interviews we get my ultimate goal is is Iron Maiden and Metallica um, and yeah I know it's the, the, the the Metallica interview could potentially be a little bit awkward if it's with Lars, especially after what I said in the last episode. Apparently, Lars playing drums sounding like he's falling downstairs with the drum kit um, has become a little bit of a, a well-liked phrase amongst the Talking Bollocks community. And, appa- and apparently we have also have adopted the phrase of monstrosity drumming, um, which was completely off the hoof and um, and, and does describe the, the work of the man very well. Um, but... Um, yeah, that, that, that's you know that's where I want to try and get with this. That would be like fucking amazing, wouldn't it? Um, and and you guys can all be a part of that if you can help us grow this. That would be absolutely brilliant. Um, so look, I'm I'm out on the road as always. I'm going to be gigging up and down um, up and down the UK. So keep your eyes out for me as Keith Platt or me. I do MC quite a lot of gigs just as myself as Harold Smith. So uh, always please do come along, say hello, um, and sit down and have a chat. Um, uh, you know, I always make time for people because um, I have no life. I'm single, no wife, no kids, uh, no mortgage. So there you go. I got nothing better to do than hang out with you fuckers if you turn up. So uh, you know, buy me a beer. I may even buy you one back. Excuse me, sorry. That is not beer. That is just water because I'm getting a bit furry mouthed. Right. So it's now time. Um, well, it's now the time of the show, folks, where we uh, we bring you some new music. So anyway, I've got no idea why I've put that fucking cheesy voice on. Um, there is a band called Cremated, London Thrashers Created. Um, their second album, Three Minute Warning, is going to be released on May the 16th. On May the 16th, I hear you say. Yeah, on May the 16th. I also hear you say, really, Howard, if only you had a song from the album that's not out until May the 16th. That would have been so cool. Really? Well, it's funny you should say that, because that's what I fucking got! And not only have I got a song for you from the new album, I have got the title track from the new album. Oh, you haven't? I fucking have! I've gone and done it! Oh, yeah. Um, to be fair, like you guys are as much a part of this as anybody, you know? This, this landed in, in my All About The Rock um, inbox. And please, uh, that reminds me, allabouttherock.co.uk. Go to the fucking website, check it out. There's some great shit on there. It's very cool people run the site. Come on. So anyway, um, yeah, create, um, create it, cremated. Created? 
that create that sort of creator, isn't it? That's cremated and creator. No, that's not working. Um, uh, so yeah, cremated second album, um, three minute warning out on May the sixteenth. On I uh, love this fiery gun hand records. Fiery gun hand. Now, for some reason, to me, that sounds like a porn star from the seventies. <laughs> hey, it's a fiery gun hand, and I'm gonna be fucking you today. <laughs> um, oh, please! I think my washing machine is broken. Um, so you didn't fucking, well, you didn't tune in for this, did you? Um, I'm losing it. Fiery gun hand records. <laughs> but, Fiery gun hand. Is that I don't know. I'm just for some reason that sounds like a perfect description for a porn star's cock. I am a porn star, and this is my fiery gun hand I got right here. Look at this. <laughs> Fucking hell. Right. I'm serious. I to be honest, I'm starving, hungry. Um, uh, I went out for a run earlier, and I know that makes me sound like you know Mr. Fit, and um, I do do try and be fit. Uh, by the way, I've got a fucking do double hernia operation as well. I uh, forgot to tell you about this, seeing as I was letting you in on loads of shit in my life that uh, for some reason this episode seems to be that way. Um, yeah, I've, I've got to have a double hernia operation. What am I? Eighty-three? No, forty-three. You know what the doctor said to me? He said, um, "Does it hurt when you have sex?" I, said, I wish I fucking knew. You cheeky bastard! Does it when I have sex? I, I, I you fucking. And, and he said, "Oh yeah, hernias are um, are a lot more common in men than women." Of course they are. We're the ones carrying all the heavy shit. That's how it goes. For fuck's sake! Anyway, look, that's my um, that's me. <laughs> that's my hernia complaint out of the way. I I I, 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 I apologise. I'm jabbering. I do tend to do this at the end of the podcast. I do apologise. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in. As always, you are the coolest people in the world. Um, thank you so much. We're picking up about 500, 500 subscribers um, an episode at the moment. That's phenomenal. Let's try and break 600. Let's break the 10,000 listens. Just please spread the word. There's no money in this. This is just. This is just. When I ask you to do all this, it's not. There's no. There isn't an end game whereby um, we start charging for this, or you know, or fucking retire on the proceeds. Because there's no proceeds. Yeah, the people behind all about the rock do that in their spare fucking time. Every one of them has, uh, you know, has got a job and or wife and kids and everything. But so. You know, when you when you when you go into that site and you're spreading the word, you what you're doing is you you you're just helping the, the the community, the the metal community as a whole. That's all. There's no like you know, there's no nobody earning shitloads of money anywhere out of this. We do this for the love, and we do this for the love, and we do it for you. Okay, you just remember that. And I kind of do it for me as well because I like podcasts. I've got a massive ego. But apart from that, um, look, guys, it's been a pleasure. It's been wonderful. Ladies, if you're out there and you can help me um, solve the secrets of the female psyche, I'd really, uh, really, <laughs> really like some help. Um, or just email pictures half naked. That would be good too. Yeah, okay. Right. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I've gone on way too long. Um, this is the title track from the new cremated album. Um, it's going to be out May the 16th on Fiery Gun and Records. Um, from the album Three Minute Warning, this is the title track Three Minute Warning. <laughs>